Mack grew up in Chicago, Illinois. She was born to editor Sheila Mack and famous jazz composer James Mack. She was the only child and grew up in a very privileged household. At age 10, her father was diagnosed with colon cancer and passed away. And then there were two, Heather and her mom, Sheila. Since her dad's passing, Heather and her mom were said to have a very rocky relationship. Heather began acting out. She was skipping school and stealing large amounts of money from her mom. She got into several violent arguments with her mom that led to over 80 police calls for domestic violence. But Sheila would never press charges against her daughter. You would think an intervention would have happened somewhere after the fifth phone call, or the 21st, or the 73rd, but 80? Gosh. In an effort to reset their relationship on a more positive and healthy note, Sheila and Heather went on vacation to Bali. Because one vacation will make up for 80 cases of aggression, right? Sheila never left Bali. Well, actually, neither of them left Bali. One was knocked out and the other is in jail for doing it. Can you guess who did it? On August 4th, 2014, Sheila and Heather arrived in Bali. They booked a room at the St. Regis, a luxurious five-star resort. The trip was originally supposed to be just the two of them. But eight days later, Heather's boyfriend Tommy arrived on a $12,000 flight that Heather paid for using her mom's credit card. Oh, and I forgot to mention, Heather was pregnant with Tommy's child. Sheila had no idea Tommy was coming and was livid her money was used to get him there. She also reportedly hated Tommy and thought he was a bad influence on her daughter. But I don't know if Tommy is the one we have to worry about. But what happened next is much worse than charging $12,000 on Sheila's card. The morning after Tommy's arrival, he showed up at Heather and Sheila's hotel door with a metal fruit bowl handle in his hand. The next thing we know, Tommy and Heather are seen dragging a silver suitcase to the hotel lobby. They placed the suitcase in the back of a taxi and left the hotel. But the contents of the suitcase weren't clothes or souvenirs. It was a deceased Sheila Mack. After abandoning the suitcase, Tommy and Heather checked in at a nearby hotel without any luggage. Hmm, I wonder where their luggage would be. Well, actually it was on its way to the police station. Good call. Shortly thereafter, Heather and Tommy were arrested. They first told investigators that an armed group of bad guys abducted the threesome and took Sheila's life. But on Heather and Tommy's phones, messages were found that contradicted that claim. The text between Heather and Tommy revealed that the two lovers had been planning this event for quite some time. And this was six months after Heather tried bribing other people with $50,000 to take her mom out of the picture. In Heather and Tommy's messages, they went back and forth discussing the possible ways to knock out Sheila. They even referred to themselves as Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, and get this, Heather and Tommy used the phrase say hi as code to initiate the moment of the attack that day. Who knew a salutation could mean something so horrific? During their questioning, Heather and Tommy claimed they acted out of self-defense in response to Sheila threatening the life of their unborn child. Heather stated she was hiding in the bathroom when the initial incident occurred. Wait, I thought they said a group of mobsters took Sheila out. Also, how was it self-defense if the act had been planned for months? That changed quickly. So why would the couple want Sheila gone so bad? Aside from her not approving of the relationship or pregnancy, Sheila had recently made her daughter the sole beneficiary for a $1.56 million trust fund. Apparently Heather wanted to inherit that early and split it with Tommy at whatever cost, even her mother's life. After Heather's arrest, her lawyers attempted to gain access to the trust fund money for her. A judge initially released $150,000 to pay her legal fees, but after the official conviction, her other requests for money have been denied, aside from the necessities, including care for her child. Oh yeah, did you forget she was pregnant? In the end, Tommy was eventually charged for the direct crime, since he was the one who committed the actual life-ending act. He was sentenced to 18 years in a Bali prison. Uh, 18 years seems a little short for taking someone's life, don't you think? Since his sentencing, Tommy has supposedly found God and is a devoted Christian. All I have to say is I hope he acts like it. As for Heather, she was charged for helping her boyfriend take out her mom. How twisted is that? She was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Oh, and she had her baby. Her baby Stella was allowed to live with Heather in jail for the first two years of her life. Stella is now being looked after by a woman that Heather first met when she was arrested. Talk about an interesting upbringing. But wait, there's more. Since her initial arrest, Heather has received several sentence cuts due to good behavior and is set to be released within the next year. So hide your moms. After her release, 
Heather will most likely be deported back to Chicago, but has already expressed plans to return to Bali to live there with her daughter as soon as she can make it back. And thanks to this story, I won't ever be able to look at a suitcase the same. Or be able to say hi to someone without thinking about Heather and Tommy's secret meaning. But hey, at least I can still eat cake. And now that I think about it, I'm gonna call my mom after this.